Hey, what's up guys? This is Gathalion and welcome back to Destiny. Man. Luke. Come on, son. Making my job difficult. Man. <laughs> Some of you might know uh, about Luke Smith, uh, lead creative designer, I think, is his uh his title over at Bungie. Anyways, he has a lot to do with raids, man. Um, he, uh, came on, uh, or was on a, an interview with, with, uh, Eurogamer over the weekend, um, and it seemed like the Eurogamer interviewer really wanted to poke and prod about the pricing of the forthcoming DLC, which is relevant, and, uh, you know, I don't think the interviewer went about it in the best way possible, but on top of that, I don't think Luke Smith really answered the questions in the best way possible, though I kind of get the reason... Or, or, or I kind of get the logic behind the answers he, he gave. So basically, here's the gist of the article. Eurogamer wants to know why, you know, X DLC is X amount of money, and why veteran gamers aren't getting X thing uh, with their package, and it kind of put out a tonality that, uh, you know, we're kind of getting screwed as veterans uh, going into Take a King, and why it's 40 bucks, and why the, the it, like, the... The super mega editions are like 60 than 80 and you know you can't get the digital items without the collector's edition and you know whether or not you get the digital collector's edition or the the boxed one and you know i guess like the extras that it comes with is like a, a dance and a couple exotic uh class items which is basically for experience boost is what those items are for which really helps uh new players and i think uh that was really targeted at new players but i digress um luke smith uh kind of came off as a dick which I can I can relate to because I feel like I come off as a dick, but that's because my tone of voice is naturally douchey. But um, you know I'm not. I think he was just being himself. He's he's kind of a uh, sarcastic guy. Um, historically, I guess uh, Halo players are quite familiar with Luke Smith. I didn't play Halo, but I'm told that he's been kind of the same dude since back then. And you know, is that a, an excuse for kind of coming off snarky? I you know I don't I don't think so, but. Um, Basically, there was a couple comments in there that people didn't like. Uh, for instance, you know, he was like, hey, if we showed you a video of the dances, you would throw your money at the screen. Um, and as a, as a, uh, <laughs> as a better player, that's absolutely true. I would throw my money at the screen, but, and you know, I'm also someone who uh, understands and relates well to sarcasm. But for someone who is maybe not a super mega hardcore fan of Destiny, or maybe just getting into Destiny, or thinking about getting into Destiny, or maybe someone who, uh, you know, is it exactly on the up and up on the latest in Snark Weekly, then uh, Luke Smith's comments would come off as kind of douchey. And I empathize with those folks because it's the case. Um, but beyond that, uh, you know, the general message was, you know, we're, we, we put out a product. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want the things, buy it. If you don't, don't is kind of the message behind it. But... One thing I sort of noticed is he brought up the comment of uh, purchasing, or uh, he sort of alluded to perhaps these things will be purchasable. Evidently, there's also a comment by Deej uh, that said, you know, um, do you think we put these things in the game? Yada, yada, yada. Um, this is this is rumored. I didn't actually read. This is what a few people inside my uh, chat on Twitch said, but they they said maybe Deej sort of hinted at the possibility of microtransactions for dances and um, I kind of agree I think uh, all the little extras that you get with the collector's edition will at launch or sometime after launch be available as a small microtransaction uh, this is something that I've been in support of uh, moving forward in destiny is microtransactions for uh, for um, uh, cosmetic things things that don't affect the game because it's not free to make this content, people actually have to put man hours into, you know, making a skin or a dance, especially because the mocap studio is is very advanced. I actually got to see the motion cap studio at Bungie headquarters, and it's uh, some fun technology. But um, animating is expensive. You know, uh, making textures is expensive. Uh, making armor pieces is expensive. So, you know, I would understand if Bungie brought out some, you know some microtransactions for things that we did a whole video on this and it seemed like the the overall uh agreeance was that it would be okay if microtransactions were in the game as long as it they weren't like selling gear or weapons it was just like you know sparrows ship shaders and emotes um but back on the main topic luke smith 
a lot of people are mad at him on Reddit. I'm not mad at him. You know, I think there probably could have been a more tactful way to express the point he was trying to get across about people will just buy this anyways. You know, if he would have said, our most hardcore of players um, are would, I believe, be willing to pay for dances is a much more tactful way than saying, if we showed you videos of this, you would throw money at the screen. That's my take on it. I think he, he very, very much could have put it a little bit more eloquent. I get the point that he's putting across, and, you know, I kind of agree, I, I do agree with the pricing of the Taken King, personally, because it's supposed to be a lot more content than the two DLCs that we've gotten thus far. So I understand why it's $40. Um, and I'm okay with it, because I understand people need to eat. And, you know, das, das, dat capitalism, man. So, you know, you, you make a product, people have to pay for a product. I get it. I get it. I do get it. You know, when people people get mad at Bungie, even though, you know, I think, I think Activision has more to do with the pricing than Bungie does. But I digress. Um, so my stance on the whole thing, for those of you who care, is that I feel Luke Smith probably should have not been the one doing the interview. Um, I think Deej should be the one doing interviews like this. The one I think Deej is a good represent uh, a, a good representative for Bungie because uh, Deej, the I don't think I've ever seen Deej give an emotional answer to something, and emotional answers can often be, you know, strewed. They can be they could be you know uh, flopped around, flipped around on you. They could be turned like I said, turned against you. They can they could be misunderstood. Uh, emotional answers, and uh, I think I think designers, developers, writers of the game, I don't think they're good people for interviews. And that's not to say that they're not intelligent people, but they created the product. And if you create something, you have an emotional attachment to said thing. And perhaps when you feel like your thing is being threatened, or or you think the validity of your choices uh, is being questioned then you tend to have an emotional response to that, and emotional responses, which is what I assume... Even a sarcastic answer is an emotional response. I mean, really. Um, I think uh, emotional responses often come off in uh, perhaps a manner that you didn't intend. So I think moving forward, uh, definitely keep... <laughs> try to keep, uh, you know, Luke Smith away from that and keep him doing what he does best, and that's make experiences like Vault of Glass, because... He's amazing at what he does. He's really good at what he does. But Bungie has a guy on board who's supposed to do what Luke Smith was in the middle of is getting interviewed, and that's Deej. You know, community managers are there. They're trained. They they hone their skills of, of dodging, redirecting, and giving thoughtful answers on the spot uh, without completely alienating and making people angry. And I think that's something that Bungie needs to possibly look out for. I know they have a lot of faith and uh, confidence in their staff, but maybe perhaps they should just put that in the guy whose job it is supposed to be. So that's my thoughts, guys. I ain't angry at Bungie. You know, it's one dude. It's one dude at Bungie giving an emotional response to something that he created and loved. You know, I'm not mad. I hope you guys aren't mad. You know, if you're among the, the folks that don't want to pay 40 bucks for Take a King, I feel ya. You know, for some, 40 bucks is 40 bucks, and that could make the, br uh, or break the bank. I, dude, shit. Back in the day, $40 would be the difference between me eating for a week and not eating, you know, so. I understand. If you don't want it, if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it, man. You know, like, but at the end of the day, it's their, their choice on the product. If you want to say that all they care about is money, well, that's business, man. That's business, man. I, I personally think that I won't, you know, give you a verdict on whether or not we're being overcharged until, um, until I put the fucking DLC on my PlayStation and Xbox and play around with it for a bit, because I think until that point, none of us really know, you know, Bungie is the kind of company that likes to lift the curtain on things, that's like, that's their thing, they keep shit secret, I wasn't even allowed to tell people I was going to Bungie, and I knew for a month that I was going to Bungie, and, and what exactly I was revealing there, and Bungie loves the reveal, they love secrecy, and I know that annoys some of you, but I think that's kind of what makes Bungie fun, in a way. And, uh, you know, I got I got accused on Twitter yesterday of, of being a sheep and a slave to Bungie because I wasn't pissed at the Luke Smith article. And to that, I just fucking, I, I had to block that person because that is, that's mega illogical. There's plenty of shit that I think could be fixed about the way Bungie does stuff, but... I'm not going to have a blanket emotional reaction 
to this situation because it's it's pretty clear what went down to me and I don't think Bungie is out to wring us out of our money but you know what I mean <laughs> anyways guys I've been rambling on for a while now let me know how you feel about this whole thing hopefully every, everything chills out because uh, apparently Deej is gonna be uh, doing something saying something in the weekly update on Thursday and uh, supposedly uh, year one players are now going to get something better than what this collector's edition comes with. So what that thing is, I don't know. I, I'm excited for it. I hope it's something cool, man. But you know, it's it's what if there's the what if what if, what if there's Johnny asshole over here who's like, well, I was gonna wait to get Destiny until the fucking Take a King came out, and now you're giving all these extras because these guys bought the game first. That's not fair, Reddit! And then we're gonna be in the same fucking situation. Oh god, this weekend's gonna be rough. Anyways, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys back inside Destiny.